My name is Tom, and in this video, I am going to show you how to express a vector in component form and how to draw it, translate it to the origin. And this will deal, in this specific example, will deal with fractions. So the points given are fractional. Okay. So let's take a look at what we have here. Say you are given the initial and terminal points that look like this. Three halves, and then another one, for example, that says one half. Okay? This will be our initial point. And let's say this takes us to the point seven halves, and then four halves, which of course is really just the number two. But it's more convenient if we keep everything in terms of halves. So the first step is the following. If this is your initial point, I'll label it I. And this is the terminal point. The procedure you've learned probably, if you're watching this video, for doing this is the same as before. The only added complication is that now we have to deal with fractions. So how do we handle it? Okay, let's walk through this example carefully to be sure we know what's happening. Well, the first step is this. Draw your y-axis. Draw your x-axis. Okay? And now make the following observation. Because these, is, that these are all in terms of halves, you want to label your axes in a similar way. So what do we mean by that? Sometimes just labeling an axis can be require just some you know careful thoughts. So this is three halves, this is one half, this is seven halves, and this is four halves, which is also known as the number two, of course. So to make things easy to separate and so on, each two spaces that I'm marking will represent one half. Okay, so let me do that right now with the red marker. Each two spaces will be a half. So this is one half. Then this will be two halves. This will be three halves. This will be four halves, five halves, six halves, and seven halves. And lastly, eight halves, which is also of course known as the number four. Just as six halves is also known as the number three, and four halves is also known as the number two. Okay, so I've decided to mark my horizontal axis this way because the axis here for this point and for this point, everything is given in terms of halves. And for the vertical, you see you got half over here and four halves over here. So I'll apply the same division of the axes. So this will be our one half. This will be our two halves, which of course is also known as number one. Next one will be our three halves, and the next one will be our four halves. Okay? Here we are. So now that we have everything marked up, Let's also label this as the x-axis and this is the y-axis. So this is the initial point, terminal point. First step, construct the coordinate grid as I've done here. Mark the coordinate grid in convenient units. Okay, so here on the horizontal and vertical, everything is taken as a multiple of a half, right? This is one half, this is two one halves, this is three one halves, this is four one halves. And I know that I should do that for the sake of convenience and prettiness almost, uh, because this is a half, this is a two, right? That's a two and that's a two. So it's convenient in this case. Once we've done this, however, the rest of it is, it looks like this. Mark the first points, three halves and one half. So three halves and then one half is over here, okay? Mark the second point, seven halves and four over two. So 7 halves is over here, and then 4 over 2 
is over here. Okay? So those are our two points. The initial, you may label it, and the terminal. Okay? And now I draw an arrow to represent our vector coming from the initial over to the terminal. So it looks like this. Okay, that's our vector. And the first step is to express this vector in component notation. So I will call this vector v. And it looks like this. Work on the difference of the x's first. So you take your 7 halves and you subtract from it the 3 halves. 7 halves minus the 3 halves. And then you take your 4 halves and you subtract from it the 1 half for the y component of the vector. So 4 over 2 minus 1 over 2. It looks like this. Now we simplify. These are over the same denominators, so we can simply work on the tops. We have 7 minus 3, which is 4, so we have 4 over 2. 4 minus 1, which is 3, so that's 3 over 2, 3 halves. We can also rewrite this as 4 divided by 2, of course, is also known as the number 2. And then 3 over 2, you may write in decimal form as 1.5. Okay. Let's mark these to be sure we know where they are in terms of the vector in the picture. So what I am tracing right now is the horizontal component of the vector, and that is the one that is marked up as 2. So you may label that as 2, okay? In 7 halves, minus 3 halves gives 4 halves. And the next step, you may label the vertical component of the vector, so that looks like this. And that one is 4 halves minus a half, which is 3 over 2, which is the same as 1.5. So you may label this either as 3 over 2 or 1.5, depending on whether you like decimals or fractions more. Personally, I like fractions. To me, they're much cleaner. So we have just been given an initial point and a terminal point. First step in many books is represent the vector in the plane. Draw a picture of the vector in the plane. So you mark your initial, your terminal, after constructing a y and x, as I've done here. Draw an arrow. Then you subtract the x's to get the x component, which is 2. You subtract the y's to get the y component, so that's 3 over 2, which is the same as 1.5. Once you've done this, the next question to be answered in many books is, take the ver vector and translate it to the origin. So in other words, take your initial point and set it at the origin. So once again, what you have to do is the following. Draw an xy coordinate system, as I am doing here. Okay. And once again, mark it in convenient units. And notice that I do this very carefully and methodically, step by step by step. There's no need to rush. If you're rushing, I guarantee you will not understand what you need to understand. Not at first. Okay, so give yourself the benefit of just taking your time the first couple times, and then it comes much more easily. This is x, and this is y. Let's label the axes as before in terms of halves. So we'll call this a half. This would be our two halves, our three halves, our four halves, five halves, six halves. The same thing applies to the vertical axis, so we'll call this a half. We'll call this two halves, and here I'm writing the fraction horizontally because it's a little more difficult to fit. Then we'll call this three halves, four halves, five halves, and of course six halves. 
And don't forget that a number such as two halves is just another way of saying the number one. A number such as four over two or four halves means two, six halves means three, and so on. Okay. So now that we have this in place, we will take our arrow and move it to the origin. So the initial point has to coincide with the origin. So how do we do this? Well, here you have to rely, rely on the concept of components. Okay, so the component in the horizontal direction is 2. So let's represent that as follows. We'll go from here, and I'm going to thicken this, thicken this, and we'll stop at 4 over 2, right? Remember, 4 over 2 is another way of writing the number 2. Then you will turn, and you will draw the vertical component of the vector, which goes up 3 halves. So you turn, and you go up to 3 halves, which is just about there, so that looks like this. Okay, that's your three halves. Once you've done this, as before, you connect with an arrow that goes this way. Okay? So to review, this is the initial point. This is the terminal. Construct a coordinate system. And this example happens to deal with fractions. So I've decided to scale the horizontal axis and the vertical as multiples of one half. And I knew to do that because I looked at the fractions that I had. This is three halves, this is a half, this is seven halves, and this is four halves. Okay? And to find the horizontal component of the vector, I did seven halves minus three halves which gave 4 over 2, which is the same as 2. And then to find the vertical component of the vector, I did 4 halves minus a half, which is the same as 3 halves, which is the same as 1.5. So this, is, this would be considered a final answer on the test. Okay? These would be the intermediate steps, and if you did this, you'd get 100. All right, next step, um, take your vector and I'm taking these problems directly from a textbook, so I'm allowing, allowing a textbook to guide me. I'm taking this, and I'm moving it directly to the origin, so it looks like this. And the way to make it work is, right, you construct an x-axis, a y-axis. Scale them conveniently, then draw the vertical, the horizontal component, the vertical component, and then connect with an arrow, as I've done here. Okay, and that completes the exercise. So if you did all of these, you'd get a hundred on a quiz like this. And that is it for this. Thank you for watching.